How's it going everybody? Steve here. You are immediately going to notice something a little different in my in my video here and that's this this big cart. It's actually a wheeled cart and it's 1500 millimeters by a th by a thousand millimeters and this is actually the base for my new laser. I'm building a laser and uh, I want to create a video series that allows you to build one too if that's what you want to do. So uh, of course as many of you know I have a Muse 3D and you may ask why on earth would you need another laser? Well, as you can see, this one is much bigger. Uh, it's also, so it's gonna be, the intent here is a, is a 900 millimeter by 600 millimeter, so roughly three feet by two feet of, of work area. And it's going to be a 90 watt laser uh, instead of a 40, 45. So it'll have a lot more power to cut things uh, I, I'm finding I'm, I'm getting bigger projects. So if somebody comes along and says, hey, I need 12 millimeter acrylic cut, well, that's three quarters of an inch. So there's no way I can do that with a 40 watt laser. Uh, no 40 watt laser, not a Glowforge, not a Muse, not a maker block, a make block laser box. There's a million of them, uh, not any of those. It's just not enough power. So, uh, so I wanted to make this bigger laser. And you'll start to see me, I've got, I've got uh, some, uh, aluminum extrusion here, aluminium if you're uh, one of our UK viewers, and uh, you're starting to see some hardware, I'm starting to lay it down, so uh, parts are starting to arrive for this, and, and uh, I'll walk you through in this video, uh, building the frame, uh, you know, kind of walking through some of the design rationale that I chose, and uh, you know, the goal ultimately is to use 100% off the shelf parts so you don't have to laser cut, uh, most things will say uh, the outside shell, the outside skin of this laser will be acrylic so that you would have to cut, but you could also cut that with a saw and, uh, and drill holes with a drill. So you don't specifically need uh, custom tools for this, which means that we can lower the bar for most people uh, if they're you know mechanically inclined. Uh, they can build this laser with just off-the-shelf parts. So, so that's the goal. And, and, you know, just a bit of background on why you would want to do this in the first place. Uh, as I was looking at 90 watt lasers, uh, I realized that there's a huge jump in price for all manufacturers when you go from kind of that 40 to 60 watt range to the 90 watt range. Uh, 90 watt lasers tend to cost upwards of, well, they start around $10,000 usually and they go up from there. So I looked at that and went, well, there's something not right here because even if you use top end parts, which is what I plan to do, they wouldn't cost that much by far. So what I'm hoping for is to build a laser in the price range of three to $4,000. And that would give me a really good high end uh, laser with good cooling, uh, lots of exhaust capability. So it's just, the intent is it's going to be a workhorse, but it's a workhorse that you can build yourself if you want. Uh, I started with, with a table design. I'll, I'll make all of these designs available in some form later on, probably with a step-by-step -step guide on what I'm actually doing. But in the videos, I'll just kind of whip things together uh, and certainly leave comments in videos below. Uh, if you want to see something in a little more detail, I can include it in the next video. Anyway, we're, go we're going to get going on this. Uh, we're going to start with with the frame, as I mentioned, and uh, starting with uh, putting bolts and T-nuts in about a hundred of these uh, to build up the corners. So let's get going on this, and you know, hopefully, you're interested in it, and and uh, ideally, you build your own. All right, so just a quick walkthrough here of the laser. You can see on screen here. The laser is actually two pieces. The bottom piece is the cart, and I showed you the cart earlier. Uh, I could have made it out of uh, extruded aluminum, but it was gonna cost a massive amount of money. So what I did was just use two by fours and quarter inch plywood to assemble that, and then put some uh, swivel wheels. These are six inch wheels, and they swivel and lock. And the reason for that is because this thing is big, it's gonna take up a lot of room in my shop, and I need to be able to move it around. So. So that was the purpose for the wheels. Uh, on top of that, and I'll just get rid of the cart here for a second. On top of that is the actual main part of the laser. And you can see it's got some, some cladding on the outside. Uh, 
what I'm planning to use here is um, is acrylic, three millimeter acrylic. There are definitely cheaper ways you could use a quarter inch fiberboard or coroplast or anything that, that suits your needs. Uh, I decided to use acrylic here just because, yeah, I like acrylic, it looks nice. And uh, what I plan to do, it turns out that clear acrylic is substantially cheaper than if I wanted to get red, for example. So. Uh, what I plan to do is use clear acrylic and paint the inside of it with Krylon paint and uh, that will give me a nice clear finish on the outside as well as uh, some protection uh, just from stray light floating around. It's the, the acrylic itself is, is enough to protect you from any kind of laser uh, threat but, uh, but I just wanted it to be red. So if I turn off the, the skin here, you can see what's inside the laser. Actually, I'll turn off the lid as well. So you can see inside the laser, there are sort of four posts. Uh, these are the, uh, y, uh, the Z adjustment, and there are some linear rails on the side, a linear rail across the middle here. I can zoom in, and uh, my laser output will be uh, running along that rail. Uh, tube in the back this is a is i'm planning to use a, a 90 watt tube a cr 90 watt tube uh, and matching power supply all of my laser bits just uh, for information all come from cloud ray uh, i have worked with them uh, for a lot of stuff here and uh, i like them uh, there is an adventure with the tube uh, <laughs> which uh, just ended up being hard to get, but I'll talk about that as we go. Uh, inside we have the bed. The bed on this laser is going to be uh, 24 inches wide and 36 inches uh, across, so 600 millimeters by 900 millimeters. This is substantially bigger than, than my, my Muse uh, workspace. Uh, and this is really the inspiration for building this, that my Muse, which I love, is just not big enough for uh, some of the projects I've been doing and uh, so it's been a bit of a challenge uh, to, to try and work with some of the bigger things. Things that you can see inside here, uh, electronics over on the side, let me just zip over onto that side. We have the Ruida controller, I'm using, a, uh, using that. Uh, it's a really nice controller, it, it supports light burn which is, which is important to me. Uh, three stepper motor uh, controllers and uh, some power supplies. I'm gonna have, I'm not showing everything here, but I'm gonna have a five volt supply, a 12 volt supply, and a 24 volt supply, as well as the uh, 28,000 volt uh, laser supply. And uh, so this box will be basically full of power supplies, but there'll be some electronics in here too. And as I go, I'll, I'll show you uh, what I'm up to there. I won't go into painful detail if, uh, as we build the frame out, which is kind of the first video here, the first part of this video log. Basically bolting uh, aluminum extrusion together isn't really that exciting, but uh, I can show you if I uh, just grab the frame here, you can see anything here that's red is a 2040 extrusion, anything that's yellow is 2020 extrusion. So there's quite a bit of, of extrusion here. Not a lot of it is actually structural. A lot of it is really just to hold things. So uh, for acrylic or to hold the laser tube, those sorts of things. And, you know, I could have easily made it a little, a little lighter and tighter, but uh, once you're buying into aluminum extrusion, you're kind of buying into some cost. So, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. So anyway, that's the frame. And that's what we'll start in this in this first video, and and uh, we'll get this all together. And uh, I, again, I won't go into you know miter gauge detail on how how I'm building this, but I'll kind of keep you up to date over over the next uh, few videos in this series to show you the progress I'm making, explain some of the problems I've run into. If you want to build your own, and uh, certainly if you want to build one of these let me know and I'll make, I'll make all the files available to you. I'm not really interested in making money here, but I, for me, the, the need here was really just the whole reason for building this. I just needed something bigger. So anyway, this, this is the laser and, and uh, we'll get going from here. So here I am, it's, uh, things have been kind of crazy around the shop, but it's, it's actually a few days later uh, than when I started this video. 
but I did manage to get a lot of the, the metal work cut and uh, put together. And it's actually starting to look like a laser. I have the frame for the lid sitting over on the side here. And all I really need is some skin and, uh, to wrap around the outside of it and some parts to put inside. And, uh, you know, we're good to go. I'm waiting for a few things to arrive. When I, and I'm not sure how to describe, uh, if you wanted to build one of these, how to describe how to put all of this together. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll just take a whole bunch of photos and uh, just put them in a collection so that if you were interested, you could see how I, how I assembled all of this. It's, it's really not that hard though. Uh, by far, probably one of the hardest things in this project is going to be to cut the, the metal. I actually have a, have a saw specifically for cutting uh, things like extrusion or well, any metal really. Uh, but if you're lucky, you have a shop around you where you can buy, not only buy this, but you can also get it cut to the right lengths and, and, there aren't too many lengths. Most of the, the long pieces are uncut. Uh, the, end, the edges here are 1500 millimeter and most of it's 2020 uh, aluminum extrusion. The big, there are some big pieces, the rails on the side and the rail across the top here are 2040 extrusion, but there isn't very much. Uh, and the one caution is you will need there's a lot of these uh, 90 degree angles uh, pieces uh, to assemble uh, extrusion. And I put larger ones in the corners. These are 2820s and these are 2020. Uh, and that's a reflection of the, the, the size of them. So they're 20 millimeters wide and the corners are 28 millimeters. That's what the numbers mean you need a lot of those. And I haven't actually counted them, but I did have to order more uh, because I thought I was gonna run out. And as you see, I still have a bunch on the, on the, on the base here, but I did use a lot of them. And uh, it does add up to, it does add the cost up, uh, but they are essential. The other thing, uh, a caution is you need to make sure you count the number of, uh, of T nuts that have to go into these slots before you put things together. Uh, I'm actually in the process right now of disassembling these because I need to, uh, to put the, uh, linear, linear rails on these two, uh, on these two sides. Uh, I knew that was going to happen, but in the process, Numerous times as I've been building this, I've assembled, uh, disassembled to put extra T-nuts in. Anyway, this is the frame uh, and subsequent videos uh, will actually do things that are a little more interesting. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching this. If you are interested, I will make all of the plans, all of the parts available uh, once everything is finalized and uh, Happily, we'll provide assistance if you, uh, if you need help to kind of figure out how to put it all together. It's, it's really not too bad, but there are some, some caveats. So anyway, all right, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, go make your world. Uh, right now, I'm gonna go make my laser. So uh, I'll see you next time.